This is where I've been living for the past six weeks. This is where I keep produce from the farmer's market. This is the little cleaning station, and that's my toilet. And this is where I sleep. Then these are how many days the last residents lived here. These are some pillows that I had made. These are some solar powered lights, and these are the days that I've been here. And then under here, I'm working on building a gray water system. And the best part, the porch. Indianapolis Island is an off-grid floating dwelling. It was designed by artist Andrew Zattel and built by the Barnacle Brothers. The island is set in the middle of the lake on the property of the 100 acres and people are invited to come out and take tours of it. 100 Acres is a park um, located behind the Indianapolis Museum of Art which contains site responsive artworks. They're mostly interactive sculptures, so we have sculptures that are more playful. Others are inaccessible for most of the year, like the island. And other works in the park point out features of the landscape. We were soliciting proposals on a national scale from um, art and design and architecture schools, and also recent graduates were encouraged to apply. Well, the proposal that I made to the museum was to come here and try to use mushrooms to filter the water because there was a high amount of E. coli. It was two times what the EPA recommends for swimming. These micro filters, they're mic called micro booms. These ones right here are, are burlap sacks that are filled with straw that's inoculated with mushroom spawn. So what you see on the outside is the mycelium growing around it. I guess the, my goals for coming here were twofold. One was to experiment in the scientific end with figuring out how to grow mushrooms, how to install them in a filtration system, figuring out where the pollution was coming from on the lake and where to site the filters, and then to be able to test and see if the filtration was working. That was one thing. The other thing was to create a series of public events and provide tours that would invite the public to come and not only learn about the science, but really reconnect with the lake and with water in general. Because without that connection, it's not, the science isn't going to matter. It's never going to get implemented if people don't feel truly connected to the environment. One of the ways I felt autonomy being on the island is there's this great sense when I'm hanging out there during the day that no one is going to like just happen to like knock on my door or peek at my window or anything like that. Like I'm, I'm sure that when I'm out there that I'm there alone and nobody is going to like just show up randomly. That can be something really nice, you know, if you're living in a neighborhood and in a community, but it is nice to be able to have that autonomy at certain points in life. I wouldn't say that I was expecting community involvement with this project, but I was hoping for it. And I've been really amazed by how much community support I found here in Indianapolis. Catherine's just not the type of person that would go and live on the island and just like read books all day. <laughs> That's just not who she is. She. Uh, it's part of her practice to interact with people. That's actually how she met Bob. She was just like hanging out on the beach one day and Bob came by and it, I think they had like some really good collaborations together. As I was just standing there looking at the island, I saw Catherine come off the island, get in the boat and start rowing this way. So um, I just waited for her to get to the beach and uh, then introduced myself, told her who I was and, and what I did and uh, she was Interested, of course, just because she was living on a, a space that I had helped design. And then also she was having a problem with the uh, floating myco booms. When I first put the myco booms in the water, they floated for like three days and then miserably sank into the water. And so I said, Bob, I have a question for you. And he said, well, give me your email address and I'll send you a drawing. And then he sent me this beautiful AutoCAD drawing of a really simple way to get the myco booms to float. It was just tying together different two by fours to kind of create a hammock for the cylindrical myco booms. I've had tons of help from people in the museum in so many different departments. In uh, curatorial, of course, they're the ones who are coordinating the project. Um, conservation, uh, a woman who's the textiles conservator showed me how to sew these burlap sacks and probably saved me like 10 hours of time just by giving me like a 10 minute demonstration of how to do it. Finding community in 
100 acres, as well as Indianapolis in a greater sense, has been really easy, surprisingly. People have been very, very open to this project and excited about it and wanting to help out. I mean, there's been countless people that have emailed me just from reading my blog saying, hey, I want to help out. I'd love to come and, you know, stuff a few myco booms, help build the filters. And so they've come and helped. So I just rode over with the myco booms, which are these individual filters that I've connected one on, on end. And now I'm looking for two trees to tie them up over this inflow outflow stream. This stream here brings all the pollution from the White River into the lake. Right now there's no problem at all because the stream's dry in the middle because it's not very rainy right now. But in the rainy season, there's a ton of E. coli that comes through this channel and pollutes the lake. Being out here, it's helped me get rid of this like feeling of like, I always have to go, I always have to keep working, otherwise I'm falling behind. And because living on the island, it's so much a part of my life, like my work is my life, that I feel like I've sort of gotten rid of that feeling, fear of falling behind. I feel pretty humbled by this process because I think it's a really big thing to take on a lake. And sort of my mindset is I like really want to make a big positive change in the world. But coming here and realizing how much of a challenge it is just trying to fix one lake has really made me think like, oh man, this is like only a lake. It's been a huge challenge for me, but I feel pretty good with the healthy signs that these microbooms are showing that it will actually have an impact on the lake.